Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So we will continue with the backtracking problems in the DSA sheet. I would just like to remind you guys that I have uploaded a fifth project, projects for resume. Uh, it is sorting visualizer. I have done only bubble sort. Please do watch that video. Okay, go to the playlist section, project for resume and you will find it or I'll put it in the end of the video also. And tell me if you can implement merge sort by yourself. Can you visualize merge sort? Or maybe I can make a video. Okay, so that is what I wanted to convey. Let us see the problem now. Longest possible route in a matrix with hurdles. You are given M cross N matrix with a few hurdles. Calculate the length of the longest possible route from source to destination within matrix. So here you will be given input. What is the input? It is first of all, how many rows, how many columns, then the elements of the matrix. So elements of the matrix are going to be one or zero only. You can consider it as a binary matrix and one or zero. What does one and zero represent? One means there is no hurdle in that cell. Zero means there is a hurdle. So whichever cell has zero value, you cannot visit that cell because it is a hurdle. You cannot travel through that cell. And one means it is a freeway. Okay. So matrix we are given and then we are also given a source that is from which cell are we starting uh, like for example from the zeroth row first column like that and destination cell we have to reach suppose second row uh, tenth column like that okay so that is what we are given and we have to tell longest possible path So here there are a couple of things. Source is there, destination is there. Let source be X1, Y1 point. Destination, let it be X2, Y2. Now, suppose our source only is a landmine. See, in this problem, let us assume destination is a valid point. Okay, not landmine, sorry, hurdle. I was solving another problem which was landmine. Okay, so suppose our source itself is a hurdle. What does it mean? That means in the matrix that we are given, the point x y x1, y1 is a zero. It is having a zero value. For example, it means that this, if we consider this zero right here, this zero here, if our source itself is that point, then we can't traverse. Okay, so then our longest path will, in is, will be invalid actually. It will be invalid. So this is some trivial thing. This much we can understand. But here, how can we traverse? We can go in all the four direction. Right, left, up, down. Okay. And we have to tell maximum path. It means that consider an example like this. Let my matrix be something like this. Okay. Consider my source to be zero comma zero. This is my source. I'm starting at zero comma zero and I am wanting to reach this point the coordinates of this point will be two comma three. This is my destination. I have to tell from source, what is the maximum possible length without going through a hurdle? So for me, maximum length that I'm able to see is if I go like this, like this and come like this. Also note that you can visit a cell one time only in a particular path. That means, see, I drew like this, right? I am saying that this is the longest path I can take. Now you can't do this. You can't do like this. You'll go here. You go here and then come back here because when you go like this, you have visited this cell two times. So that is not possible. So in almost all these backtracking problems, if you have observed carefully, we have to have a visited matrix 
to know if we have visited that cell or not. So this visited matrix is must. There is a pattern to solve all these backtracking problems. We need a visited matrix. We need to check if the point is inside the matrix, if the point is safe, is it inside the matrix? Okay. Like for example, if this is the matrix here and if my point, if I reach somewhere like here, like this here, then that is invalid. So I should get an indication. So all these things are in almost all the backtracking problems involving matrix. Okay. Now coming back to the problem, I was saying that we will take a path like this. So how did I, you know, tell that we are going to take a path like that? So just a minute. Yeah. So from a point, from a cell, we can go in four directions. Correct. So we will go in all the four directions. And once we reach our destination, how do we know we have reached destination? When the X coordinates, Y coordinates are the same. When the row and the columns match, that means we have found our destination. We will keep a variable answer and we will calculate the path length whenever we traverse. If answer is less than path length, we will make answer equal to path length. And when we are visiting a point, we should mark that point as visited in our matrix. And after checking out all the possible paths from that particular source, we need to unmark it in the visited matrix because it will help us get a better answer. So these two things, marking and unmarking in the visited array, that is common in all the backtracking problems which involve matrix. So this is also a pretty straightforward problem. I'll show you the code only and explain directly, not to waste much of your time. Okay. So see here, I am taking input here, number of rows, number of columns. Then I'm taking the matrix input. Then I'm taking the source input. So this is source and this is destination. It is that cell, the coordinate, X, Y coordinate. Then I'm taking a visited array and all the cells are initially unvisited. So it is marked false. Now I'm checking if my starting point, the source itself is a landmine. Actually, I should write hurdle here. There is another problem which I'll be doing tomorrow. That is landmine. So source point is a hurdle. Then we don't have any path. We can't traverse only. Otherwise, I'm passing all these variables to solve function. I'm passing number of rows, number of columns, matrix, visited. Answer over here will tell me the length of the longest path, the length, the value. And this is my source, x1, y1. This is my destination, x2, y2. And zero here is path length. Initially, path length is zero. Okay. And I'm printing the answer. So let us see what is our solve function. It is taking all these values. And important thing to note is that we have to pass every time the row and column when we are traversing through the matrix, we should know where we are. So we should know which column, which row we are at. So that is with these two variables. Okay. So when we are recursively calling the function again and again, these two variables only will change. And of course, the path length will increase by one because it means that we are visiting the next cell. Either we are going right, left, up or down. So if we have reached our destination, we check like this. If our current row and current column, see P over here is for path. I've made a short form. P row means current path. Where am I in the uh, matrix? Which row, which column? Okay, if we have reached destination, then check if our, if we have found a longer path length. 
if we have found a longer path length, then uh, record that in the answer and return. And this is for checking the, uh, you know, uh, safe condition. If we are inside the cell, sorry, if we are inside the matrix and we are not on a hurdle and we have not visited this point before, because as I told you here from source, we can go like this and go here like this and come back. So then we'll get a error here that we have visited this point twice. So we need to know that we, we have visited that point twice. So we can't uh, continue with this path. So we can't continue with the path. So we just return, we don't do anything else. Then we mark true in the visited array. Our current cell, wherever we are, we mark it true as visited. Then we check right, left, up, down. So four recursive functions. After solving all this, we are marking the current cell as unvisited because we want to check if we have a better path. It means that, see, from this source, can you observe here? This is my starting source. I can go right also. Okay. So I can have a path like this. So right, I'll go and then I can't go anywhere. So this is one path. This does not give me the answer. However, after I finish this, I need to unmark this cell as not visited because now I'm taking new path. I'm taking this path. I'm going down like this. So when I'm taking new path, why should this cell be still visited? It is not visited because I'm taking a new path now. So I need to unmark it in the visited matrix. So that's why I'm unmarking. See, I'm stressing on these points because these points only are major things in all the backtracking problems. If you have observed till now. Okay. And finally return here. So if I run, see, I put the solution in the description box. Tell me if there is some error, I'm getting the answers for all the things that I'm doing. So I'm taking this matrix. I want you to solve and tell me if this is correct. Just stay, just pause the video and uh, see my input, what I'm giving. I'm giving a matrix five cross six dimension and starting a, a, a so, sorry, source and destination is two comma two, three comma three respectively. So I'm saying that I'm starting at two comma two and going to three comma three. My maximum distance is 14. Are you getting 14 for the same? If you want, I will increase the uh, this thing I'll zoom in see here. This is my input. Are you getting 14 for this? Just check and tell me in the comments. Now in this question, they can also ask, uh, you know, to print the, uh, this thing path. You, you are, you, you can also be asked to print the path. That means you have to print all the cells that you visit. You have to print the coordinates of the cells, the row and column of all the cells that you visit. So that also can be done. I'll expect that from your side, you try to do that. You just have to take extra space. You, you can make vector of pairs and you have to add a line after every recursive call or be, sorry, before every recursive call. That means you have to include the point. See here, we are saying we are going to the right column, right? We are doing P column plus one. So whenever you do that, before you do that, you should include this point over here. We are saying visited. We are saying this point is visited. You include this point in a vector of pairs. Okay. You just have to include this point in vector of pairs and remove that point from vector of pairs after this visited is equal to false because why are we first of all doing this visited equal to false because uh, we are saying when we're taking a newer path, why should this still be marked visited? So when we're taking a new path, that current point will also not be included. So I expect that from your end only try to do that. Basically try to print the entire path in terms of cells visited. 
so that's all for this video i hope you like the explanation and if you have any doubt tell me in the comments i'll try to reply and answer please share the video with all your friends as much as possible subscribe to the channel it will really motivate me until the next video take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye